What about the children? Because, I mean, there's the Israeli children, of course, yeah. and then there's our kids too. But I, there's news that Israeli parents are furiously deleting the social media apps on their children's phone because Hamas has threatened to, as the airstrikes continue in Gaza, start executing the hostages mm. and to broadcast it, it on mm. social media. And they, they, you know, of course they don't want their children seeing that. I mean, Israel's not that big. The, the odds of them knowing somebody connected to one of these hostages are high. And then, uh, secondly, I'd love to talk about our kids back here and how much of this is appropriate to share. Again, I, I think it's you, you, uh, none of it, really, when you get right down to it. Uh, like I said, we don't know the full impact of these kinds of images on children. Uh, and yet, I, I think about my own kids. They were sort of third grade when 9-11 happened. And yet, they that all rained down on them. Uh, it was all television. It was not as though it was in their hand all day. But they saw plenty. And it changed their lives. It certainly changed their lives. Now, in all kinds of ways, and a lot of it is unpredictable. Who knows? The, the, again, the thing I worry about more than anything, though, is is our brains. We, we literally uh, are flooded with cortisol, and we can disconnect. We can, you know, our parasympathetic system can kick in and disconnect us from reality, from our body, from our feelings. And that, on a chronic basis, is, is not good. So I'm thinking about your daughter and her mm-hmm. caring. We've entered this very unusual time when there's a huge value put on grandiose caring. I care, you know, mm-hmm. and that and this on this grandiose level, that is not healthy. Care about people right in front of you. I think the sort of a, there's a message embedded in all in all this, which is, and we always get to this point anyway, right? The people you love, the relationships you value, double down protect the people you love get involved with them spend more time with them talk about these feelings and try to process them that that space of closeness we call intimacy is the way the human brain builds it doesn't do it on its own it needs other brains and children need adult brains in particular and even adults go back to that same mechanism and use other brains to help us regulate and make sense of things Mm -hmm. so there's a sort of a I don't want to say that. I'm not going to use any positive words in any of this, but but there's something to be done uh, that could help. You mentioned 9-11, and it, it just jarred something in me. What we did at Fox was on the anniversary of 9-11, we would show the tape mm-hmm. of the attacks. But the one thing we would never show was the falling man. I, I know that. It was multiple bodies, well, but they, yeah, they, and that, they've become known collectively as the falling. And it's left from the museum and stuff too, right? It's left out. And I, I, I don't like that my kids were exposed to that, but that was the equivalent of what we're seeing. That was the part where you go, I can't, I can't handle it. Right, so this much. is resonating for me because yeah. it's like all we're seeing on social media about this conflict, this attack, is basically the equivalent of the falling down. Yeah. It's the up-close, personal yeah. attacks on civilians. And it's not to say that it's not incredibly awful to see those planes going into the towers. It is. But it is, it's just there's something else. It's more personal and intimate to see an individual yes. suffering up close and personal. Yes. And that's what's we're, that's what we're seeing. You know, like, I, I can't get over the, the body of that woman in the back of the Jeep. Yeah unnaturally curved and them standing on her i just i can't get past it it's just like that these non-humans are roaming around us you know the the level of depravity well this is the part that i'm really struggling with i i I did not know that we could go back to that i mean i know human history is packed with people doing that sort of thing i I didn't know we're going there Mm -hmm. and and that's and that it's always the case that when your sense of reality gets a record scratch like uh oh i didn't uh, it it's it takes a while to process it i'm not i'm not there yet i I don't know what to make of it yet and by the way there was another casualty in all this which is the press i've noticed that i am so distrustful of everything in the press particularly in cable media and that kind of thing i I, I look at some of the stuff and go, well, maybe, yeah, maybe I, I is somebody doing something to me again? Is am I being manipulated? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> is, is, that, and that that is it's uh, true. That I, there there were multiple casualties beyond the human casualty. Harvard University, another casualty. Yeah. The the things that came out of the the student groups the other day. I, I, okay, you're done. Yep. That's that's it. You was lost good your, to see, by the way. Some I think it was a hundred professors signed a letter pushing back on those student groups. Stephen Pinker and Alan Dershowitz and others have been speaking out. Um, I, I, uh, all of them, by the way, have been 
peripheralized by that institution, mind you, right? These Very are all people so. that have been writing public discourse and uh, have not exactly been embraced by the mainstream no. at that university. But what about the people for whom this actually does raise trauma? Like there, there oh, are people, a lot of us. right? It's like yeah. people who have experienced yeah. real trauma in their yeah, lives. Yeah. And it could be sexual violence, could be anything. This actually does have a way of re-traumatizing them. One hundred percent. And I think what people don't really appreciate, I, I've done a lot of thinking about this, and I actually wanted to write a chapter in my book about it, and they told me it was too speculative, but the history has borne me out, which is we went through a really an epidemic of childhood trauma in this country. It was not normal. People went, oh, they're just talking about it. No. No. The the abandonment, neglect, physical abuse, sexual abuse of children in the 60s, 70s, 80s that was unleashed in the name of a revolution. It's just, hey, little, they're little, pe- little adults. They, they're they sexual too. Oh, oh, boy. People went berserk with that. Then, of course, if somebody's been through that, they have about a certain percentage probability of being a perpetrator later. Then mm-hmm. it's just awful. Not No fault of theirs. They were rendered that way. But, again, it's their fault for not maybe dealing with it before they hurt somebody else. And as a result, we have a massive population of people with what are called narcissistic injuries, childhood trauma, and it results in a certain kind of general uh, personality construct in this country uh, that, let's say, is prone to rage. Uh, And when that rage develops, usually it gets acted out through scapegoating like collecting together and scapegoating, thus cancellation. The French Revolution, it was the guillotine. And the the message of history is a mathematical probability of 100% that if you are participating in the scapegoating, eventually you too will be up on the guillotine. Mm-hmm. That's just... That's just the way history works. That's the way humans work. And so we have all this going on, and now we have this incredible extraordinary images that we're being exposed to and of course it re-traumatized people now the question is are they going to do what i was saying and really try to regroup with priorities and boundaries like you're trying to teach your daughter and you know, work with people you're intimate with or are they going to become enraged and start scapegoating and who knows where that goes i, I as we're seeing the press shift their emphasis looks like the scapegoating going toward israel now and then yesterday two days ago the scapegoating was towards the, the hamas i i that, that those are all scapegoating impulses and I just were, and then the, if you're not scapegoating, you're dissociating. And dissociating is that feeling, again, I've mentioned earlier, that you're out of body or you're watching something in a dream. And to the extent that that is a normal reaction to trauma, everybody does it. But if you're sort of using that day in and day out, it becomes destructive. Well, I know you've heard betting and apparel brands say, we're the most softest, we're the most comfortable, but do they actually promise it? Do they guarantee it? They put their money where their mouth is. At Cozy Earth, they do. At Cozy Earth, you get the softest, most luxurious feeling fabric guaranteed. And that means if you don't love Cozy Earth's bamboo sheets, their famous bamboo sheets, you have 100 days to get your money back. They're not worried, though, about refunds because once you try Cozy Earth, you're hooked for life. Start with Cozy Earth's best-selling bamboo sheet set made of 100% premium viscose from bamboo. Super soft, ethically sourced sheets which regulate your temperature, keeping you cool in the summer and cozy in the winter months. And it's not just sheets. They've got pajamas, loungewear, bath towels, and much more. Unbelievably soft, unforgettably comfortable. The coziest way to make your home a sanctuary. And don't forget Cozy Earth's guarantee. All of their products can be returned or exchanged within 100 days and include an additional 10-year warranty against defects. CozyEarth.com. Enter code MEGAN at checkout for up to 40% off your order. CozyEarth.com. Promo code M-E-G-Y-N. CozyEarth.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.